10 Creepiest Unsolved Train Mysteries of All Time Number 10. The Sunset Limited Derailment On October 9, 1995, an Amtrak passenger train known as the Sunset Limited was making a routine trip from Los Angeles to Miami. At approximately 1.40 a.m., it was crossing over a trestle in a remote desert area of Arizona when it suddenly jumped the tracks and derailed, sending four of its cars crashing 9 meters, 30 feet, into a ravine. An attendant named Mitchell Bates was killed in the crash and over 100 people were injured. It quickly became clear that the derailment was a deliberate act of sabotage, 29 spikes had been removed from the track so that the rails could be shifted out of position. The perpetrator was careful to keep the rail's signal circuits intact, so that the train would not be alerted about any problems with the track. This suggested that whoever was responsible had an intimate knowledge of railroads. In fact, the method used to derail the Sunset Limited was very similar to an act of sabotage from 1939, which caused a passenger train called the City of San Francisco to derail in the Nevada desert, killing 24 people. An article about the City of San Francisco crash had been published in a train journal shortly before the Sunset Limited derailment and may have inspired the perpetrator. At the crash site, investigators found four typewritten copies of a note claiming responsibility for the attack. The notes were signed Sons of the Gestapo and criticized controversial incidents involving the ATF and FBI, such as the Ruby Ridge Siege of 1992 and the Waco Siege of 1993. However, investigators have yet to uncover any evidence supporting the actual existence of a group known as Sons of the Gestapo. The perpetrator remains unidentified. Number 9. The Murder of Rochon Brazil On the morning of February 14, 2005, 19-year-old Brooklyn resident Rochon Brazil failed to show up for any of his scheduled appointments. Witnesses would later report seeing Rochon outside his apartment at approximately 7.30 a.m., after an unidentified man rang the buzzer. Rashon was then seen entering the Gates Avenue subway station with the man. There were also unconfirmed sightings of the two men at the Nostrand Avenue station later that day. In the early morning hours of February 17, transit workers at the Nostrand station found two bags next to the subway tracks. One of them contained some tools and bloody drill bits. The other contained some of the dismembered remains of Rashon Brazil. Over the next few days, more of Rashon's body parts would be discovered in trash bags at a local recycling plant. His head was never found. A medical examination concluded that Rashon was likely alive for two days following his disappearance, so he may have undergone torture before his death. Since Rashon was known to be homosexual, there was some speculation that his murder was a hate crime, but no evidence could be found to support this theory. However, there was one intriguing clue in the form of the bag containing the bloody drill bits, which was type sold exclusively to employees of the Metropolitan Transit Authority. Since Rashon's remains were discovered in an area of the subway station usually only frequented by employees, it's been theorized that the killer might be a transit worker. It's unknown if Rashon's killer is the same man seen with him outside his apartment, and an investigation has so far failed to turn up any solid suspects. Number 8. The St. Louis Ghost Train For the past century, the village of St. Louis, Saskatchewan, has been notable for a supernatural phenomenon known as the St. Louis Ghost Train. At an old railway crossing located outside the village, witnesses have long reported seeing what appears to be a train light in the distance, which appears out of nowhere and gradually moves toward them. It is usually accompanied by a smaller red light, and both will disappear without explanation before reaching the railway crossing. According to local legend, a conductor was once decapitated by a train on that very stretch of track, leading to the belief that the large light represents the train and the red light represents a lantern being carried by the headless conductor's ghost. Although the line has now been abandoned for over 30 years, and the tracks are no longer there, the ghostly lights continue to make appearances. Recently, Two local high school students attempted to solve the mystery as part of a science fair project. 
They waited by the railway crossing while one of their fathers flashed his car headlights from various locations in the distance. When the car was on a hilltop highway 8 kilometers, 5 miles, away, both students saw lights resembling the ghost train. They theorized that the vehicle's lights were enhanced by an optical phenomenon known as diffraction. While the students wound up winning an award at the science fair, many residents do not believe their theory debunks the mystery, since reports of the ghost train date back to before automobiles were even used in the region. Number 7. The Disappearance of Martin Allen On the afternoon of November 5, 1979, 15-year-old Martin Allen finished school and spent some time hanging around London's King's Cross station with his friends, before eventually hopping on a train home. He never arrived and was soon reported missing. A witness later recalled seeing a nervous-looking boy resembling Martin in the company of an unidentified man at Gloucester Road station that same day. The man was holding the boy's shoulder and warning him not to run away. Over the years, there have been very strange developments in this case. In 1998, a shrine to Martin Allen was found inside the home of an alleged pedophile. This person matched the description of the man last seen with Martin, but authorities could not connect him to the disappearance. Martin's family believe there is a massive cover-up surrounding his case. In recent years, they were informed that files and evidence related to Martin's disappearance were destroyed in a flood and that a police officer inexplicably took some other files with him when he retired and moved to Spain. It has been speculated that Martin's disappearance may be connected to a scandal involving an organized pedophile ring, in which children were allegedly delivered to high-profile figures at a brothel known as the Elm Guest House during the 1970s and 80s. One anonymous witness came forward to claim he was a victim of the ring and had been molested by an MP during his childhood. He also claims to have personally witnessed the murder of three other boys, one of whom may have been Martin. In spite of these allegations, Martin Allen's disappearance remains unsolved. Number 6. The Disappearance of Jesus de Galindez. Born in Spain, Jesus de Galindez lived in the Dominican Republic for six years before moving to New York City in 1946. He became a political science professor at Columbia University and worked on a doctoral dissertation denouncing the brutal practices of Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo. Trujillo reportedly had his agents offer Galandez $25,000 to discard the dissertation, but Galandez refused. On the evening of March 12, 1956, Galandez finished teaching a class at Columbia and accepted a ride from one of his students to the subway station at 57th Street and 8th Avenue. After Galandez entered the station, he was never seen again. Nine months later, Galandez's case was connected to another strange disappearance when the abandoned car of an American pilot named Gerald Murphy was discovered next to a seaside cliff near the capital of the Dominican Republic. By this point, an investigation had uncovered evidence that Galandez had been abducted from the subway and put on a plane flown by Murphy and another pilot named Octavio de la Maza. Galandez was subsequently delivered to Rafael Trujillo, who ordered his execution. Murphy had allegedly leaked details about his involvement in the Galandez disappearance to his fiancée, and it wasn't long before he also went missing. Even though Murphy's body was never found, the Dominican government arrested Octavio de la Maza for his murder. In January 1957, de la Maza was found hanging in his cell, leaving behind a suicide note in which he confessed to pushing Murphy off a cliff. Unsurprisingly, most people believe the note was a forgery. Even though Jesus de Galian days was never found, the story ended with some poetic justice when de la Maza's brother participated in Trujillo's assassination in 1961. Number 5. The Murder of Seymour Barmore. In 1868, a Cincinnati private investigator named Seymour Barmore was brought to Nashville for an unusual assignment from Tennessee Governor William Ganaway Brownlow. Following the U.S. Civil War, the Ku Klux Klan had been carrying out acts of terrorism and murder as part of their resistance to Reconstruction. Brownlow charged Barmore with infiltrating the KKK and passing information back to the authorities. Barmore accepted the assignment, 
But it wasn't long before the clan figured out he was a mole. Barmore was abducted from a train by several clansmen, held captive overnight, and warned to back off. Nevertheless, Barmore was determined to finish his assignment. Two days later, he took a train to Pulaski and infiltrated a secret KKK meeting there. He then proceeded to hop on a late night train to Nashville, but the train came to an abrupt stop near Columbia. Over a dozen masked clansmen proceeded to board Barmore's car and abduct him a second time. This time, Barmore would be hanged and shot several times before his body was dumped in the Duck River. It was rumored that Barmore had been carrying a notebook containing the identities of several prominent Tennessee clansmen, but it disappeared after his death. It was also believed that many of the crew members of Barmore's train were clansmen and had been warned to stop for his abduction. Even though there was no doubt that members of the Ku Klux Klan were responsible for Barmore's murder, their identities were never revealed and no one was ever prosecuted. Number 4. The Ghost of William Terrace In November 1955, Jack Hayden, a ticket taker at London's Covent Garden tube station, was locking up for the night when he encountered an elegantly dressed man, complete with gloves and a cane. After Hayden unlocked the gate to let the man out, he mysteriously disappeared. Four days later, Hayden saw the same man on a staircase, but he once again disappeared when Hayden called out to him. Two more employees soon reported seeing the ghostly figure. When Hayden provided a description to a sketch artist, it led to a photograph of a man who was a dead ringer for the Spectre. It was William Terrace, one of England's most popular stage actors during the late 19th century. Over the next two decades, there would several more sightings of a figure resembling Terrace inside Covent Garden Station. The ghost of William Terrace is also believed to haunt the nearby Adelphi Theatre. On December 16, 1897, Terrace was playing the lead in a production there, but when he showed up that night, he was stabbed to death by fellow actor Richard Archer Prince, whom Terrace had previously had fired from another production. Prince was known to be a mentally unstable alcoholic and the two men had a number of heated confrontations in the days before the murder. At his trial, Prince was declared to be insane and sent to a lunatic asylum, where he would spend the last 40 years of his life performing in productions for the inmates' as theatrical society. At the time, many people felt that Prince got off easy, which might explain why Terrace's restless spirit returned to haunt London. Even though Covent Garden Station did not exist when Terrace was alive, it is theorized that he haunts the place because it was built on the former site of his favorite bakery. Number 3. The Disappearance of Robin Putnam In 2012, Robin Putnam was a 25-year-old student at the California College of the Arts in Oakland. On July 7, Robin boarded an Amtrak train for a trip to see his family in Grand Junction. Colorado. At approximately 3 o'clock a.m., the train made a scheduled stop in Salt Lake City, where it remained for 25 minutes before completing the journey to Grand Junction. But when the train arrived, Robin Putnam was no longer on it. All of his belongings, including his wallet, journal, and laptop, were still in his seat, but Robin himself was nowhere to be found. It's likely that Robin got off the train during the stop in Salt Lake City but no one knows what happened to him afterward. Before his trip, Robin had been displaying bizarre, erratic behavior, and suffering anxiety attacks, which forced him to quit his job at a coffee shop. He had apparently not slept in several days. On one occasion, he awoke from a terrible nightmare and seemed to have trouble telling his dreams from reality. Even though Robin didn't display any strange behavior while on the train, it's theorized that he may have became disoriented when they arrived in Salt Lake City. There have been unconfirmed sightings of Robin in the area, and two months after his disappearance, a man matching his description was seen in a security video at a Salt Lake City restaurant, drinking a beer with an unidentified woman. His current whereabouts remain a mystery. Number 2. The Disappearance of Andrew Gosden one of the strangest British missing persons cases of recent memory involves a 14-year-old boy named Andrew Gosden. In 2007, Andrew lived with his parents and sister in Doncaster. 
On the morning of September 14th, he seemingly left for school as usual. But he never arrived and his parents realized something was very wrong when they discovered his school uniform in his bedroom later that day. Apparently, after his family left the house that morning, Andrew returned home to change his clothes. He then emptied his bank account of £200 before arriving at Doncaster Station, where he purchased a train ticket to King's Cross Station in London. He would be captured on CCTV footage there at approximately 11.20 am. That was the last confirmed sighting of him. Since Andrew had no known problems, his family were completely baffled by his inexplicable decision to travel to London. He left no note behind to explain his actions and took very few items with him. The strangest detail is that Andrew insisted on purchasing a one-way train ticket, even after he was informed that a return ticket would only cost one pound more. One year after Andrew's disappearance, an unidentified man spoke into the intercom at the doorway to Lemster Police Station in Hertfordshire, claiming to have information about the case. When an officer arrived to answer the door, the man had disappeared. After more than seven years, there is still no trace of Andrew Gosden or any explanation for his mysterious train trip. Number 1. The Japanese National Railways Incidents During the summer of 1949, the city of Tokyo experienced three mysterious incidents involving Japanese National Railways, Jr. After he was appointed president of Jr., Sadanora Shimoyama was tasked with firing thousands of employees, many of whom were believed to be affiliated with the Japanese Communist Party. On July 5, Shimoyama was on his way to his office when he stopped at a department store. He never returned to his vehicle, and his mangled body was found on some tracks the following morning. He had been run over by a train, but it was impossible to tell if his death was a murder or suicide. Ten days later, an unmanned junior train was deliberately crashed into Mitaka Station, killing six people and injuring 20 others. Ten junior union members were indicted for sabotage, as authorities believed the incident was retaliation for the upcoming job cuts. Only one suspect, Keisuke Takeuchi, would be convicted after he confessed to the crime. Once he had been given a life sentence, Takeuchi recanted his confession and maintained his innocence until his death in 1967. His family has continually fought to clear his name and newly uncovered evidence suggests that he was in a bathhouse at the time of the crash. On August 17, another junior train derailed near Matsukawa Station after joints and spikes were removed from the track, causing the deaths of three crewmen. Once again, 20 junior union activists, many of them affiliated with the Communist Party, were accused of orchestrating the crash. However, as the years went on, their convictions were all overturned. Now, many people believe that all three junior incidents were orchestrated by the authorities as part of a conspiracy to discredit the Communist-leaning Union. If you enjoy video, please subscribe my channel. Thank for watching.